Good morning. My name is Neil Maddock and I am the director of a charity called Martis Productions and it's great to have this opportunity to share something with you this morning on video. I was due to be with you in person but alas that cannot happen at the moment so maybe some other time. But for now uh, I just want to share something from God's Word with you this morning and I'm going to be uh, digging into Genesis 19 as a starting point and the story of when uh, Lot and his family are escaping Sodom and Gomorrah as God is about to bring destruction. So I'm going to read Genesis 19 starting at verse 21 and just going down to verse 26. All right, the angel of the Lord said, I will grant your request. I will not destroy that little village, but you must hurry and escape to it for I can do nothing until you arrive there. So Lot reached the village just as the sun was setting over the horizon. Then the Lord rained down burning sulphur from the sky on Sodom and Gomorrah. He utterly destroyed them along with the other cities and villages of the plain, wiping out all of the people and every bit of vegetation. But Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind him and she was turned into a pillar of salt. And it's particularly that verse that I just want to uh, share something from with you this morning. Genesis 19, 26, that says Lot's wife looked back as she was following behind and she turned into a pillar of salt. The title uh, of this message, if you like, is Don't Get Stuck Looking Back. You see, this story here is a story of how Lot's wife uh, was running towards a future, towards a destiny and a new beginning with God. And yet in a moment she chose to look backward and it cost her her future. It cost her her destiny. So the message for us today is don't get stuck looking back. You see, we all have a past. Some of it is good to be celebrated and remembered fondly. Some of it is not so good. Some of it is bad. Some of it is painful. There's a song uh, that I remember hearing in a musical a few years ago, and it said there's a few lines that said the road is filled with twists and turns, but that is the road that got us here. You see, we've all been on different journeys, traveled different roads with twists and turns, with highs and lows. And now we're all at this shared experience of lockdown and social restriction. But we've all been on a journey to get where we are today. We all have a past. The temptation for us, as it was with Lot's wife, is to spend a lot of our time looking back over our shoulder at our past. Things that we've done wrong, mistakes that we've made, things that we've said and done that have hurt others. Times that we've not been obedient to God, maybe, and we know that we've caused him hurt and pain. We all have a past and there is that temptation to be stuck looking back over our shoulder. But the danger is that if we do that, we become like Lot's wife and we miss out then on what God has got purposed and planned for us in our future. A commentary that I read on these verses said this, we should resist the temptation to linger in the quicksand of past mistakes, your own or other people's. When you get bogged down in the past, you miss what God has for you here in the present and you fail to see the connection to the future. You see, looking back can destroy us and mean that we miss out on all that God has got planned for us in our future. It's important that we address our past. It's important that we take time to, to glance back to see where there are things that we need to deal with, things that we need to address so that we can strip off those things and run the race that God has caused us to call us to run. You know, we can't we can't change the past. Things have happened. We can't go back and magically make them different. But what we can do is is deal with those things, address those things, strip them off 
so that they are no longer wearing a stang. That's what uh, the writer of Hebrews says in Hebrews 12 verse 1, that we are to strip off every weight that slows us down. And sometimes things from our past can feel like heavy burdens that we carry, heavy weights that we carry with us. And God doesn't want us to carry those. He doesn't want us to get stuck looking back constantly at the past. He wants us to be looking to him and looking ahead to the destiny and the future that he has for us. As we look back on the past, we need to do three things. We need to reflect on what has gone before. We need to reject the things that are not useful and will weigh us down. And then we need to reconnect with the God who has called us to run the race. Reflect, reject and reconnect. As we do these things and we address things from our past, I, I want to suggest this one. There are three things that will happen for us. Firstly, wounds can be healed. God can heal wounds that have been inflicted on us by ourselves, by the things that we've done wrong. But God can also heal wounds that have been inflicted on us by other people. It says in Psalm 147 verse 3, he heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. You know, maybe you've had your heart broken in the past by someone else, by a loved one, maybe through a relationship of a different, uh, of a, some kind of relationship that you've had that has gone wrong. God wants to mend your broken heart today. He wants to heal that wound, allow you to, to reflect on the past reject the hurt and the pain and the baggage and then reconnect with him so that you can carry on into the destiny and the purpose that he has for you. I like that how it says as well that God can bandage our wounds and it reminded me of a time uh, when I had a, a cycling accident. I was knocked off uh, a bike back in 2013 and I damaged uh, my hand and it got put into a cast and bandaged up and uh, I don't know if you can see but I don't necessarily have knuckles on those fingers there uh, they got kind of crushed in the accident and they've never returned so my hand is, is now a different shape and I just love the fact that it says here that God bandages our wounds and, and the purpose of a bandage is to surround something and protect it so that it can heal and be restored just like my hand. But you see, there are areas of our life that God wants to bandage today so that they can then heal and recover and be restored. And you can ask God to do that for you, to bandage the areas of your life, the things from your past that need to be dealt with. The thing about my hand, like I said, is that it's fully restored and it's healed and I can use it perfectly well, which is good because I'm right-handed. But ever since my accident, it's been a different shape. You see, God can heal and restore you and me in our lives with past hurts and wounds. But we may come out of experiences in a different shape. And that is OK. We shouldn't be ashamed about the new shape that we are because of the experiences we've had. As long as we have given those things over to God, We've reflected on those, that past. We've rejected the negativity and, and the bad stuff. And then we reconnect with God and his purpose for us. God can use our new shape for his plans and his purposes as we move forward and we trust in him. God doesn't just want to heal the wounds. He wants to restore us completely. It says in Isaiah 58, Verse 8, your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will quickly heal. Your godliness will lead you forward and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. God wants to restore you. God wants to lead you forward into the future and God wants to protect you along the way. So as we look back and we address things from our past as we reflect and reject and reconnect wounds can be healed but the other thing that can happen is that wisdom
can be gained. There's a popular saying, isn't there, that we learn from our mistakes. But I don't know about you, sometimes I don't learn and I carry on making the same mistakes and doing things wrong again and again. It seems, though, like common sense, doesn't it? That if something happens and it doesn't go well or you do something wrong, that next time you learn and you do it better. Thomas Edison, who is credited as uh, inventing the light bulb, when he was asked about how many times uh, he had tried to create the light bulb and uh, how many times he'd failed, he replied by saying, I have not failed. I just found 10,000 ways that wouldn't work. And you see, we maybe feel like we've tried 10,000 times to be a better person, to overcome a problem, to, to deal with a recurring sin maybe in our life that keeps popping up. And we just haven't found ways that work. You see, we need to reconnect with God, reconnect with him and allow him to heal the wounds from the past, to look at the mistakes that we've made, and then we can gain wisdom and learn from those things. Proverbs 3, 13 says, Joyful is the person who finds wisdom, the one who gains understanding. And as we reflect and reject and reconnect, it's important that we find wisdom, godly wisdom that will lead us forward, that will stop us from, from constantly looking back at mistakes we've made and wondering why and going over those same mistakes. But instead, as we get wisdom, we are better prepared to move into the future and all that God has in store for us. We, we gain more understanding of who God is, of how he works, and of ourselves and how we uh, need to respond to God to be better people, better followers and disciples of him. Proverbs 3, 11 to 12, the, the couple of verses preceding this, though, are interesting because they speak of God's discipline. And it says this, do not reject the Lord's discipline. Don't be upset when he corrects you, for the Lord corrects those that he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. You see, when we make mistakes, not if, because we're all human, when we make mistakes, we need to reflect on them and allow God's discipline to, to be applied in our lives, to allow him to correct us, to, to shape us and to mould us, to give us understanding and wisdom so that we are better equipped and prepared to walk into our future with him. Then we don't get stuck looking back at our past mistakes, wondering what's gone wrong, wondering why we haven't changed. But instead, we grow in wisdom and stature and we move forward into all that he has in store for us. I came across this great quote. It's an anonymous quote and it simply says this. Don't carry your mistakes around with you. Instead, place them under your feet and use them as stepping stones. See, I love the idea of taking a mistake that, that we're holding on to from our past, taking it, addressing it, dealing with it then laying it down before us and using it as a stepping stone into something more and into something else that God has for us. You know, the Apostle Paul, he pressed on. He speaks about pressing on in Philippians 3 to reach the end of the race. He says that he hasn't achieved uh, perfection. He presses on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. I focus on this one thing. And you remember what he says? Philippians 3, 13, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race. This morning, don't get stuck looking back. Reflect, but then reject the stuff that needs to be left there and reconnect with God so that like Paul, you can forget the past. You can look forward to what lies ahead and you can press on in your race. Finally, this morning, wounds can be healed. Wisdom can be gained. And I want to say that weaknesses can be transformed. You see, we all have weaknesses. It comes with being human, unfortunately. But if a weakness 
keeps us from moving on into God's purpose and plan for us, then again, it needs to be addressed, needs to be dealt with. We're not all meant to be great at everything. We're not all meant to be the best. That's what the body is about. We're not all meant to be hands. We're not all meant to be feet. We're all not meant to be eyes and noses, etc. We're all different. We don't have to be great at everything. But if there's an area of weakness that is more about uh, a character flaw or some sort of something in us that that leads us to, to not pursue God, that leads us away from God, if anything, then that weakness does need to be addressed. And we need, need to allow God to transform that into a strength. We have wrong attitudes. We have bad habits, recurring sins, and God wants to address those. He wants to, to get our attention and, and up for us to take time to reflect on those so that we can then reject them and reconnect with him. The American author, Max Lucado, he said this. He said that God loves you just the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way because he wants you to be just like Jesus. You see, God wants to transform our weaknesses so that we are more like Jesus Christ. Again, the Apostle Paul, he wrote about boasting about his weaknesses in 2 Corinthians 12. He said that my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and insults and hardships and persecutions and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, I am strong. Look at what Paul says there. He says in my weaknesses, in my insults, in my hardships, in the persecutions and in the troubles. See, all of these things sound like a list of things that could well keep us looking back to our past, times when we've been insulted and we've had hardship and persecution and troubles, they can keep us looking back over our shoulder. And like I said at the very start, the risk of of us doing that is that we miss out on all that God has got for us in our future. We need to reflect on the things from our past. We need to reject the stuff that is gonna hold us back and weigh us down. And we need to reconnect with the God who has our future in his hands and who calls us to run a race with him. So don't be like Lot's wife. Don't get stuck looking back at the past. Today, make a decision. Say to God that you want to address the things that need to be addressed from your past. You want to strip off those weights and you want to run into the destiny and the purpose that he has for you. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. And I pray that today, as we have shared this, as we have listened, that Father, you will speak to us. Father, show us the things from our past that need to be addressed. Father, help us to to make that time to reflect on things that we have gone through, things that have happened to us, mistakes that we have made. Father, give us the courage and the bravery to reject the things that are not of you, the things that will weigh us down and slow us down. And then, Father, thank you that you are waiting to reconnect with us and to lead us into our future and into a new land. So, Heavenly Father, thank you for this time this morning. Thank you for your word. And I pray that it will now work in the lives of the people that have heard this message today. And you will meet with them in a fresh way. In Jesus' name, amen. May God bless you. And again, like I said, I hope to maybe meet you all in person one day. But for now, take care. Bye-bye.